Hi guys, welcome back. This is part three of our automatic temperature control project with flow code. In part one, we designed the circuit diagram. In part two, we started with the flow chart of this project. And in this third part, we're gonna finish up the code. Let us run the project and see where we left off in part two. Automatic temp reference temperature. You can enter your reference temperature. Let's say 45 enter so the problem you can only access this reference temperature menu on startup if you want to change the reference temperature while your device is running we're gonna create some new code you can press and hold the star key then it's gonna bring up this setup menu again okay so in the while one loop this execute continuously we're gonna read the keypad Keep it, get number. And if it was the star key that was pressed, you're gonna say if key equals to 10, because the star key is gonna return the numerical value of 10, we're gonna wait for 3 seconds to check again. We're going to read the keypad again. Get number. And if the key is still pressed, then we're going to call the setup temp reference macro again. You can see the advantage of using macro so we don't have to write that code again we can just call it setup tempref that's run now set it to 13 okay the current reference temperature is 13 if i can press and hold for three seconds then it's going to bring up that menu again. Okay, I'm going to set it this time to 46. Okay. Now, once we have set up our reference temperature, we need to store it into the peak EEPROM so that whenever we start up our device, we don't have to enter again this same reference temperature. We can only change it if you want a new reference temperature. So I'm going to need a EEPROM component. This is going to enable us to write the peak internal EEPROM. We can also use an external EEPROM, but I think for this application, we only need a few data. So a peak internal EEPROM should be more than enough for application. Okay, this is the initial values that will be populated to the EEPROM. The supported format are in decimal from 0 to 255, the hexadecimal from 0 to FF. We can also enter the value in S key or a string. So we don't want to have a initial values, so we're going to delete this initial values. Before we call the setup macro, we're going to start reading first from our EEPROM to find out if you've got some stored setting value. So we're going to check read EEPROM. We've got only two functions. You can either read or write. The read is very simple. You just have to specify the address that you're going to read from. And you're going to return the data we're gonna return and store it into a variable we're gonna create a new variable we're gonna name it eeprom value it's gonna be a byte variable then we're gonna check if we've got something we're gonna initialize our reference temperature with this value from the eeprom reference temperature equals to eeprom value then we're gonna check if this reference temperature 
is greater than zero. and less than 100 let us invert our if condition gonna swap it so if the reference temperature is greater than zero and is less than 100 it basically means that we've got a reference temperature in ee pro so we're gonna go straight to our main loop and start reading the temperature and compare it we're not gonna prompt the user to enter a new reference temperature but if the value equals to zero then we're gonna prompt the user to set up a new reference temperature and in the setup ref macro once we have set up this new reference temperature then we'll have to store it into the eeprom again So basically after we have set up our reference temperature we're gonna display it to the LCD then we're gonna store it into the EEPROM EEPROM write the address it's gonna be zero you must always write to the same address that you're gonna read from and the value that we're gonna write we're gonna write the reference temperature and that's all guys let us run our project enter ref because there is nothing in the epro if you click to view console you can see everything is ff because there is nothing stored in the first byte there is nothing we're gonna enter a new reference temperature 27 enter and you can see that value is stored in eeprom 27 is 1b in hexadecimal if i can stop the simulation and run it again can see it goes straight into the main code does not prompt me to enter a new reference temperature because it's gonna read the reference temperature from eepro okay save compile again compilation successful to simulate in proteus before you simulate a eepro in proteus you must always make sure that you reset persistent model data it says persistent model data is a model data like microprocessor EEPROM memory that ICS maintains between simulations. Confirm this option will force all model to revert to using their default memory settings. So this basically is gonna clear all the values of EEPROMs that was saved previously. Click yes, gonna run. This is gonna be the first time, so I should not expect anything in EEPROM. Okay, it prompted me to enter new reference temperature. I'm gonna set it to 27. Enter. The fan is rotating. Can decrease the temperature. I can press and hold my star key so I can bring back the setup menu. Okay, it's working as well. I'm gonna enter a new reference temperature. Let's say 20. Enter. So the reference temperature is 20. I'm gonna stop the simulation and start it again. Start. can see it start it reads from the eeprom and display the previous 20 degrees i can change it again this time i'm gonna set it to 30 
enter okay okay so that's all guys for this tutorial there are some other features that you can improve on this project this is just a basics that you can use to build up on your project in hardware design the first thing we must never leave the unconnected pin floating because this can just be a good candidate for interference like this rb3 is not connected we might get some random numbers on the keypad or some other malfunctions if you never gonna use this pin in your hardware design so the best idea is to connect it to ground and drive it low in the code but if you might need in the future to set it as an input so the best idea i think is always to use a pull down resistor so I'm gonna need another resistor and in code I'm just gonna drive this pin low gonna close this console window after initializing my LCD I can also drive that pin low Port B, gonna send a zero single bit, bit three. Okay, save, compile again, run the simulation again. Everything should be the same. This shouldn't affect our code. Okay, still working. So you can do the same for other unconnected pins. It's always a good practice never to leave pins floating. The other thing that we might consider in this design, as you can see, let us run the project again. Instead of having a fixed reference temperature, like in this case we've got 30, if we increase the temperature to let's say 29 you can see now it's 29.3 if i just increase it it's gonna be 30.2 basically it's gonna be higher than 30 and the fan is gonna switch on but if the temperature decreases a little bit not even one degree then in theory it's gonna switch on the heater so this can make the project kind of oscillating so i think the best way is to have a range so the best way I think is to have a minimum and maximum, maybe you can have a range. So if your temperature is still within that range, not going to change anything. Instead of switching on the heater just after 0.7 degrees, I think it's, it's better to have a range or to add an offset to a reference temperature. You can say maybe you can compare if temp because if the reference temperature plus an offset value maybe of 2 degrees or 5 degrees, then you can decide whether to switch on or off so that i think it can make can bring some stability to this design there may be some other features that you can add on this project in this tutorial we're just gonna limit to this please let us know what you think you can write your comment thank you guys for watching this tutorial don't forget to subscribe to this youtube channel to receive more tutorials Please don't forget to like this video, to share it, and to leave your comment. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.